gonna take this wheel cover off before we remove the wheel. Just use a 19 millimeter socket. Loosen up these plastic covers. All right, slide that hubcap off. And take the 19 millimeter socket, take the lug nuts off. And pull the wheel off. Right, we wanna take these bolts out. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket. And you can take the top caliper bolt out as well. I'm just gonna take a straight blade screwdriver, go between the rotor and the caliper, just pry it out a little bit. Just gonna compress the piston a little, and then I can slide the caliper right off. With the caliper off, I'm gonna take a brake caliper hanger and just hang it from the coil spring. Just make sure there's no tension on the brake hose. Just take a straight blade screwdriver or just slide the brake pads off. I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter socket and remove this brake caliper bracket. Loosen these bolts up. And slide the bracket out. I want to take this screw out. Just use a T30 socket. You can use an impact driver. I'm just going to tap it in a little bit with a hammer. I'm going to use an air gun. Put some pressure on it. Take it right out. Take a hammer and you want to hit in these areas. Be careful not to hit the studs and sometimes it breaks free. This one's pretty rusty. And get the rotor, take it off. You can use a 32 millimeter socket or a one and a quarter. Remove the nut. Gonna take a hammer, give the axle a tap, make sure it's loose. Uh, be careful, you don't wanna um, make the damage the threads right there, but if you give it a little tap, it's okay. Now I'm gonna spray the hub bolts. There's three bolts that hold the hub to the knuckle. Just spray those down, let those soak a little bit. Now I'm gonna take the wheel speed sensor out. I'm gonna use a T30, remove this screw. Pull that screw out. You should be able to grab the sensor. It shouldn't be in there too tight and just set it aside. You can take that out so we don't break it. And now use an 18 millimeter socket and loosen these up, take them out. And take them out. And take that out. You could attach a slide hammer and actually pull this off or just use a regular hammer and give it a tap. Um, you can see that it's starting to separate a little bit. Sometimes you can grab the backing shield and see if it will wiggle a little bit. There's not a lot of angle to swing here, so just do the best you can. And that's loose. Now we'll give it a little tap on the axle. And slide that off. There's the bearing. There's the backing shield. All right, there's a little uh, spacer right here. You have to reuse that when you put this back together. So don't forget that. I'm gonna set aside for now. I just wanna clean this area right here. You can use a wire brush. Just clean some of this out. 
will make it easier to put the new uh, hub bearing in. All right, we can take this spacer. If you want to put a little bit of grease on this, just so that it will stick to the axle so it doesn't fall off, it's a good idea. Just like that. You can take a little anti-seize, just put it on this area if you want to. It just makes it uh, less corrosion in the future if you ever have to take it off again. And take the new hub bearing, the backing shield, line it up in position. Take the bolts, get them started from the back side. It's recommended that you replace these bolts when you're doing this job. I'm going to use the 18 millimeter socket and torque these bolts. The first pass is going to be 66 foot pounds. And then you're going to go around again and with a torque angle meter, if you have one, you're going to tighten it an additional 60 degrees. And then the final pass, you'll go another 15 degrees. Do the best you can if you don't have an angle meter. I'm going to take the wheel speed sensor, put it back in position, take the screw, put that back in, get it started, and then snug it up. Take the rotor, line it up with the hole on the hub, right there, reinstall this screw. And I'm just going to snug it up. And I'm going to take the caliper bracket, slide it over the rotor, take the two bolts, get those started on the back side. And I'm going to torque these bolts to 74 foot pounds. Take the brake pads, the one with the squealer is going to go on the inside at the top of the brake caliper bracket. And then one without the squealer is going to go on the outside. Now take the brake caliper, slide the hanger off. Now we want to compress this brake caliper, so I'm going to use a brake caliper compressing tool. Get this lined up. And slowly compress the brake caliper. As I ratchet this, this is pushing on the brake piston, which is pushing the fluid through the hose, through the lines, and back up into the master reservoir. And just do it nice and slow. All right, that piston's all the way down. Now I can loosen this up. and slide it out. Take the caliper, just make sure the boot looks good. Everything's good there. Slide it back over the brake pads. Now install the brake caliper bolts. Make sure the brake hose is not twisted. Then I'm gonna to torque these to 21 foot-pounds. Take the new axle nut, install that. To keep the hub from spinning, I'm just going to take a pry bar and just slide it in position like that. Take a torque wrench. I need to torque this nut to 111 foot-pounds. Now there's three parts to this. At this point, we're going to loosen this back up 45 degrees. So I'll just spin the pry bar around. Loosen this 45 degrees about there. Flip this around again. Now I'm going to torque this again an additional 185 foot-pounds. There we go. Install the wheel. I'm going to torque these lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds in a star pattern so that the wheel gets tightened down evenly. Just 
going to go around again, double check. Line up the hubcap. And just take the socket and tighten these down. Just do it by hand, otherwise you're going to strip these out. And you want to pump the brake pedal because there's going to be an air gap between the brake caliper piston and the brake pads. So you want to eliminate that air gap. Make sure it feels pretty good. That's good. And then just check the brake fluid reservoir and just make sure that the brake fluid is closer to the max line or at least in between the two. You can give it a shake and our levels right there and adjust accordingly.